Hello and welcome to a new video. Before I get started on this, I just want to apologise for the sound of the fan. However, it is currently 36 degrees where I am. Um, and that's just the outdoor temperature. That is not the temperature of my room, which is like a sauna. Um, so, <laughs> that is why I look a mess and there's a fan in the background. But today, as you will have seen from the thumbnail and the title, I am doing a tag and I'm doing the Scottish Patter tag. Um, I was tagged by Lisa at Lisa Does Life. I believe the original, like the original tag was created by Sadie Reads again. I will leave links in the description box. Um, but there is, there's 12 questions here. The first one isn't technically a question, but we're just gonna, just gonna go through i am not gonna be a now i know i know why lisa tagged me she wants me to attempt to say these things i'm not gonna be i'm gonna be putting them here so jokes on you lisa i am not gonna be doing that today um <laughs> but um i have answers so that's what you're gonna get i feel like this is a, gonna already be a bit of a mess because it's just too hot but needs must i need a video so let's just go so the first one is actually really easy. I will say this one, it's all right, pal. I'm not gonna to attempt to say in a Scottish accent because that's not gonna happen. But this is obviously a greeting or a term of endearment and it is tag for people you'd like to see, like to see this tag. Um, I don't really know who has and has not been tagged yet. Um, so if I tag you and you've already been tagged, I apologize, but you don't have to do it if you don't wanna. Just thought I'd tag you. So I'm gonna tag um, Chloe at Chloe Reads Books, um, Meg at 12 Books A Day, um, Chloe at Persistent Bookworm, who I think might have already been tagged and pro probably done this already, and Liv at Live in Magical Bookland, who again has probably already been tagged, but they're, they're my four people I'm tagging. <laughs> so the second one here um is sarcastic said when you don't believe someone and the question is name a memoir or biography etc that wouldn't be believed in fiction now i can't really answer this because i have not read enough non-fiction or like <sighs> memoirs in general um to be able to i have a few here but i haven't read most of them <laughs> I actually have only read two from here. Um, I don't really know how to answer this. Yeah, so I can't really answer this. So that's a great start to this. <laughs> Question number three is this, and it is anger or frustration telling someone who's talking nonsense to get lost. Um, and this is a book that made you angry. <laughs> this is a new edition, but it is Last Sacrifice by Rochelle Mead. I cannot hold up the book because even though it's only been a week since my unhaul, those books went. <laughs> they actually went this morning to Tory. So they're gone. But I hate this book with a like searing passion now because of one thing that happened. So yeah. Number four is this. <laughs> Again. I'm definitely not attempting this one. Um, so this is nonplussed when you don't have a clue. So basically me at trying to read this. Um, a book you couldn't follow or one you didn't understand the popularity of. For this, I'm choosing Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Um, it's no secret I DNF'd this 178 pages in. I don't hate this book. And I can understand why there's hype. I just, I couldn't follow it. I wasn't interested in it. And... Actually, I can't understand the hype. I take it back. Yeah, I, I can't understand why this is such a loved duology. Sorry. Number five, I will say it is Belter. Um, admiring descriptive when you think someone or something is amazing. A beloved character. Are we going to be shocked that I'm saying Adam Coulson from The Love Hypothesis? No, we're not. He is forever going to be my number one book boyfriend. I love Liam Harding from Under One Roof. I love Aaron Blackford from Spanish Love Deception. I love Brendan. I just, I can't not pick Adam Coulson for this. Soz. Number six is this. <laughs> I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce this, but I can literally hear it being said. Um, but it is a scrotum based insult, which can also be affectionate. Welcome to Scotland is the exact line here. Um, it's a hated character. Um, we're back on the Vampire Academy. Rose and Dimitri. 
not gonna say anything more i hate them i loved them and now i hate them enough said <laughs> Um, number seven is this. It is a description. A person who come from the Highlands. And this is a book from off the beaten track of your country. I am going to be honest. Most of the books I've read from my country are set in like cities and like well-known villages like Bath and things like that. So I can't really answer this. I, I can't think of any that are in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to have to um, not answer this one unfortunately number eight is pure baltic um it's a description very cold um and it is a book set in a cold location um i'm going for the bear and the nightingale trilogy um or the winter night trilogy by um catherine arden which is the bear and the nightingale the girl in the tower and the winter of the witch i love this trilogy it's set in very snowy russia it is absolutely beautiful and i adore this trilogy so much number nine is taps off <laughs> um description of weather or joyous exhalation when it's sunny and warm enough to strip off um so this one is a perfect summer read or your most inappropriate beach read this could count for both perfect summer read and inappropriate beach read and it is the spanish love deception by elena armas um so obviously this is set in spain they go to a wedding in spain um it's very sunny and it's very summery um so it fits for that but it's a little bit spicy it's not the spiciest i want to point that out but it does have spice so inappropriate beach read number 10 is i feel like this is like I, I, it looks like it should be said a different way than it definitely is so i'm not gonna try um but this is an action or crying and for this it's what would make you cry more never being able to reread your favorites ever again or never being able to read anything you hadn't read before this is so hard but i'm actually gonna go with it would make me cry more if i could never reread um because rereading is like what I do for comfort. I love rereading books. If you've seen my TBRs over the last like year, you'll know that I reread a lot of books. They make, they make me happy. I know what's gonna happen. Even if it's sad, I know what's gonna happen. I can prepare myself for it. There's no unexpected crying coming out of it. If I know I'm gonna cry, I know I'm gonna cry. Um, so I think it would hurt more if I couldn't reread anything again because I absolutely love rereading, which I know is probably a different answer to a lot of people because it would it would hurt me never to be able to read anything new, especially if like Ali Hazelwood brought out new books and I couldn't read them. But having that knowledge that I would have like the love hypothesis to reread over and over again, I'd be fine. Um, number 11 is one I'm, again, not going to attempt. Um, so this is encouragement. Go for it. And this is a book that lived up to the hype and or does hype shape your feelings about a book? Hype sometimes shapes my feelings about a book. Um, I think part of Strange the Dreamer was that it hurt that everyone loved it and I just didn't. But I've since found a lot of people that didn't like it. So I feel a bit better about it now. <laughs> um, but one book that definitely lived up to the hype you know what i'm gonna say it's the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood is it a becca sit down video if i don't talk about the love hypothesis no it isn't um so yeah this definitely lived up to the hype 100 percent. and then the final one number 12 is this which is a description of behavior to really get carried away in the moment and for this it's shout about a book you don't think enough people have read i'm going for a trilogy here and i don't talk about this a lot because i don't talk about a lot of sci-fi but it is the dark stars trilogy by danielle rollins so we have stolen time we have twisted fates and we have dark stars um this trilogy is incredible. I do. Not, I think I've only ever seen one other person talk about it other than me on BookTube. And it's just, it is a shame because this is incredible. This has time travel. It's got like a futuristic Seattle. And like when I say futuristic Seattle, I mean like half of Seattle is underwater. They've had to build up and it's brilliant. There is also uh, like time travel into the past and different parts in the past and how time travel can be affected and honestly 
everything about this trilogy is incredible i absolutely loved all three of these books and like i said no one talks about it and i want everyone to read it it's ya there's a tiny little bit of romance there's mystery there are a few bits that you're like oh my god what and i just absolutely adore it and i want everyone who likes ya sci-fi or any sci-fi to read this please and thank you okay so that was the scottish patter tag i just realized i've not been sat in front of the fan really um because i angled it wrong <laughs> i wondered why it was getting so hot um but that is the tag i hope you enjoyed this video um let me know in the comments below what your answers to some of these would be um if i've tagged you i hope that you do the tag but again obviously like i said no pressure um but i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time bye